Hey, one more thing before we start. If you see me look down, if I'm looking down and you're staring at the top of my head, I'm just making notes. So yeah. Yeah, Please don't okay. think that I'm not interested. I'm not listening. I am. Lori, you're in left field. What's going on? I'm over here. Come on. <laughs> I'm listening so intently that I just make little notes for my editing. That's all. So I just want you to, I just want you to, I always like to disclose that where you're like, uh, hello, Dory up here, you know, so. Okay. All good. All right. I'm going to count us down and we'll get started here we go. in three, two, Bryce Henson is our guest today. I'm so excited to have Bryce on. It's his first time here at the Fitness Business Podcast. Bryce is the Chief Executive Officer for Fit Body Bootcamp. Bryce, are you ready to rock this podcast today or what? Corey, thank you so much for having me. Let's rock it. That uh, sounds like an awesome plan. Yes, we are going to talk about drum roll boot camps and everything everybody wants to know about starting a boot camp. What do you think of that? Well, thankfully I came to the right podcast because I've been, uh, I was worried, but you know what? I've been doing this for 10 years. So I hope I can uh, add some value to you and your audience today. Oh, you are our industry expert today. So you definitely will be adding value. That is for sure. Awesome. <laughs> All right. Let's talk about Mr. Bryce for just maybe 30 seconds. You can tell all of our awesome listeners out there a little bit about yourself and how you got from being Bryce in Michigan to Bryce in California. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. So I'm from the Midwest. Um, great place. Amazing people not necessarily the fitness capital of the world. So there I was, 21 years old, just put myself through school, very humble beginnings. Um, Taco Bell, the staple of my diet. And uh, it froze on me there for a second. So did, did it freeze for you too? Uh, you're just your, just your um, video froze, but not your, not your speaking, not your audio. Got it. So where should, should I just start that again or where should? Uh... Yeah. So let me pick it up. I'll say, how did we get from, you know what? I'm, I'm going to say, how did we get from Michigan to California? And then you can pick it up. Okay. Cool. All right. So how did we get from Michigan to California? Well, great question. I grew up in the Midwest in Michigan. Great place. Amazing people not necessarily the fitness capital of the world. So there I was 21 years old, uh, just put myself through school, hustled, um, you know, came from very humble beginnings, um, but graduated from Michigan State and for, for four, probably more than that, uh, four years or more, um, Taco Bell and fast food is a staple of my diet. So uh, there I was, I graduated, moved to Southern California, excited the palm trees, the blue skies, the beaches, Los Angeles, also the plastic capital of the world. So with very little business experience, life experience, 3000 miles from home, I was definitely homesick. I definitely had some good days, but way more darker days uh, than I want to admit. And it's because I wasn't a fit guy. So um, I lived that way for about a year and a half. I was contemplating, do I move back? Did I make the right decision? Uh, but thankfully a fitness mentor, a guy I went to college with, a dear friend to this day, his name's Adam, moved to California, showed me uh, how to train, how to lift weights, how to do introduce introduction Production of circuit training, but most importantly, how to, or I guess the value of, of coaching and accountability, uh, because without, without that, I don't necessarily think I would have, uh, you know, transformed the way that I did. So thankfully through his guidance, uh, went through a massive physical transformation, dropped 20 pounds of body uh, weight, put 20 pounds of muscle. But as your listeners know, fitness does way more than that. It changes your life. And it did that for me. And that was really my gateway to moving to California and really becoming fit. And then ultimately getting in the fitness industry. Yeah, fitness certainly also changes your mind too, which is uh, people seem to forget sometimes how important fitness is for the mind. Totally. Uh, mind, body, soul, like everything. It's, it's the gateway drug. And I, I, uh, for me specifically, when clients tell me that, oh, you know, I can't afford this program, certainly sensitive, but my response is you can't not afford this program because for me, it just gave me everything. I became a high, the highest uh, performing sales rep in my company along a lot of list of accolades just because of fitness again mind body and soul so couldn't agree with you more my story all right so michigan state guy did you say oh boy that's right uh, big <laughs> spartan i was hoping you weren't going to go michigan wolverine on me but yes michigan state spartan for sure no in our household michigan state is forbidden my daughter is a uh, was a division one um, athlete and they lost in the NCAA tournament to Michigan. Oh. So we, we are not allowed to even talk about Michigan anymore. He's still well, 
<laughs> Please don't tell your daughter about this interview then, Dory. <laughs> All right. So speaking of the interview, we brought you on today as an industry expert. We have so many of our listeners put requests in to have guests that have had successful boot camps or, you know, have built successful boot camps. And, you know, that's why you're on today. Your topic today is how to start a fitness boot camp. And I'd really like for you just to begin with giving all of our listeners your definition of what a boot camp is. Yeah, great question. For me, a boot camp is defined as personal training in a group setting. So whether that's indoor, what's that's outdoor, there's a lot of variations. Our model here at Fit Body Bootcamp is indoor, super clean outside of the elements, um, indoors, and we're able to produce the best results in that training environment. Uh, but really at the end of the day, it's personal training in a group setting is how I would define a bootcamp model. Yeah, I think that's a fair definition. It's funny because I feel like boot camp's one of those things, it's in, it's out, it's in, it's out. And I feel like, boy, it's real. It's kind of like kickboxing. They seem to be coming back with a vengeance. And I'd like to get your perspective on this, but I feel like COVID really kickstarted that outdoor boot camp again. Yeah, I'm not totally sure actually um, on outdoor. That's not my line of focus, but I think, you know, what we've seen over the last 10 years is the gravitation away from big box concepts and actually towards boutique training. So whether that's indoor, outdoor, um, other boutique concepts like fitness or excuse me, like kickboxing or rowing or whatever the case may be, um, a boutique kind of approach uh, typically has a, a lot more accountability, a lot more coaching and a lot more results. And for us here at Fit Body, it works a lot uh, incredibly well indoors because it's outside of the element. We're able to have a self-contained location and typically speaking, we're able to produce way more results. So that works for us. Yeah. So I was going to ask you, do you prefer outdoor or indoor? But um, you already answered that question for me. Totally. In fact, though, uh, that said, with the caveat, or at least perspective, our model initially started outdoors. This is back in 2008, 2009, um, after the recession, uh, the real estate market collapse. Um, so our founder, I'm the, well, I'm the CEO, newly minted in 2021. Um, our founder, Bajos Cooling, or B for short, dear friend of mine, business coach, mentor, um, started outdoor um, in, with our original concept. But what we actually learned um, after scaling the outdoor business for a while, you had elements, you had the weather, and we looked in Southern California. I know you're in Florida, which has nice weather, but not all parts of the country um, have nice weather year round. Uh, so we found that by bringing it inside, we're able to self-contain and really provide a better experience for our clientele. So we were outdoor, now we're indoor and uh, off we go. So speaking of that better experience for your clientele, on an average, how many people are you entertaining in an indoor boot camp class? Yeah, great question. So our typical locations typically have anywhere from two to 300 members on average and any specific session is how we refer to them to instead of classes. And the reason that we do that is we want to separate ourselves from the big box concept where you get free classes or let's face it, you talked about your daughter going to school. She might have skipped a couple of classes in her day. I certainly did, but you don't skip a personal training session with a professional. So our sessions are typically anywhere from 25 to 35 people. It ranges on the high end. We can uh, some of our locations can train up to 40 people. Um, so it just a, it, it's a it's a split and also just depends on um, the morning, the evening, um, you know, weekends typically are very busy. So it all, there's, there's a few variables, but that just gives you a rough idea. And I believe you told me before we even started this interview that you have, you franchised your business and you're about 300 locations. Yeah, that's right. So um, we have uh, just over 300 locations. So we're all in North America. 90% of our locations are in the U.S. and then 10% of our locations in Canada. Uh, but how I actually got started well before I was the CEO, I was actually a Fit Body Bootcamp owner. So I launched my first location in Orange County, California in 2012 and up scaling to a handful of locations. Um, and then in 2018, when our founder, Bedros, um, saw our brand really hockey sticking uh, with hundreds of locations being added on, um, you know, made me the, the offer and recruited me to be his initial vice president and then turn that to CEO. So I still have uh, oversight on two of my locations in Orange County, uh, but I also oversee the brand now with over 300 locations. Oh, wow. So there has to be something awesome about what you're doing in those four walls. So I would just love for you to tell all of our listeners, what are your top five factors that make an awesome boot camp? 
Yeah, great question. And I loved how you framed it, Dory, because there's something special. And I think that is really, really important to highlight and emphasize. Um, I'll give you the top five. But I'm actually going to go. The fifth is actually the most important. But uh, number one, um, just strong programming. We're in the fitness industry, so you have to have strong programming. Um, typically speaking, we have three types of workouts. So we have a metabolic conditioning focus, focused workout, which is really a fancy way of saying a more cardio focused uh, workout. We have a resistance training uh, workout, which which is more strength based and lifting weights. And then we have a classic workout with this, a blend of both. So strong programming is bullet point. Number one, uh, bullet point. Number two, you got to bring the energy people. So you got to, your coaches have to be on fire on the mic. Uh, Cause let's face it, at least for our clientele that we service at fit body bootcamp, uh, Mrs. Jones is our dream client. As we refer to her, she's a mom. She has a couple kids. She has some weight to lose. She's typically not a fitness athlete or trying to shave off a second on her 40 yard dash to make the NFL combine. So because because of that, we need to bring the energy, the motivation. So high energy is number two. Uh, number three is form coaching. Um, at the end of the day, you need to be able to create and uh, cre create a strong program on a daily basis that change. So you, your muscles have confusion and you get a better result, but you also have to make sure that you're providing your clientele proper form coaching. So they're doing the movements right, um, not only to maximize the results, uh, maximize the results, uh, but also to avoid injury. So that would be number three, form coaching. Uh, number four is nutrition coaching. Because at the end of the day, yes, human movement uh, is extremely important. Uh, as we talked about, it's great for the body and also mind and soul. Uh, but ultimately, most of our clientele uh, are coming in looking for a body composition change, typically to lose weight. Uh, so nutrition is the majority uh, or the factor that that from a, a majority perspective is going to be that uh, factor to change uh, your client's body composition. So nutrition coaching is number four. And then number five, for sure, and I really wanted to kind of uh, finish here because it is the most important. It's the relationships. It's the culture. It's the vibe. And Dory, you've been to a place probably where the vibe was a little off. Maybe they had good food at a restaurant or something like that, but it just didn't feel great, right? Um, well, the opposite also true. If you have a great culture, great vibe, you can make up for a lot. Um, you know, of other weaknesses. And certainly you want to shore up all your programs to the best of your ability, but really number five is strong relationships, strong culture, and really a strong vibe in your location. So those are the five factors uh, that I've seen in my 10 years of experience that really equate to an incredible boot camp, an incredible business, and really incredible client experience. Yeah, I can't agree with you more on number five, because it's, it's like you said, your majority of your clientele is, uh, again, just the average fitness Per, you know, the person just looking to lose some weight, like you said, they're not looking to shave time off to go to the NFL combine. That majority isn't like screaming to go to the gym. You know, there's always that little hesitation. So in order to really keep the crowd coming and keep the, your clientele coming back, you do have to build the relationships and the energy. I think the energy is, is another one that's super important. Oh, totally. And Dory, what I like to also say too, especially when we're training our franchisees, our new owners, our coaches and leaders in the brand, and this is a very uh, common misconception that I'm in the fitness industry, I'm in the coaching industry, I'm in the health industry, I'm in the, the, the nutrition industry. Those are all things that you do, but first and foremost, primarily you are in the people industry, in the people business, you're in the relationship business. And if you lose sight of that, you lose sight of everything. For sure. And as I sit here and, and I listen to you and I look through your top five, I mean, really, it is hard to say one is more important or not as more important because the, the, if you got to have good form or you're going to get hurt and you're not coming yeah. back, you know? So nutrition, obviously you can't be coming to boot camp and going home and stopping at McDonald's for the Big Mac and the Big Gulp on the way home. So it, it's amazing how it all has to work together. It's like a well-oiled machine. Totally. All right, so we're going to move on from our five factors that make an awesome boot camp. And I want to ask you, because we, we do get this question a lot, and that is about pricing. Could you tell our listeners how you, you there at uh, Fit Body Boot Camp do your pricing? Yeah, that's an incredible question. And we've changed and evolved throughout the years. Um, when we first started, uh, we went member uh, monthly, excuse me, monthly payments, um, which we still has, have an option if a client really wants to go that route. Uh, but really our model now is weekly payments. So uh, typically speaking, someone tries our program, either a free trial or a 20 a day uh, jumpstart program, which typically reigns anywhere from 67 to $97 to try for a full four weeks. And that really gives Mrs. Jones or our 
our dream client a you know taste of an experience of what the experience at boot camps like and then after that 28 day uh, low barrier offer or trial program we upgrade uh, our clientele or mrs jones as we like to refer to her to a client and typically our first you know tier of membership is a 12 week uh, membership and we do weekly payments and the reason that we ask for 12 weeks is it's just along uh, just enough time to actually show uh of Mrs. Jones or our clientele results. Um, now, are they going to absolutely rapidly transform their body? No, but they're probably going to start seeing some changes. And as uh, Tony Robbins has famously quoted, progress equals motivation. So if we can get Mrs. Jones to see some progress, she's going to be more motivated to continue. And that's the reason that we have our initial membership length of time, 12 weeks. And again, our pricing is on a weekly basis. Okay, that's great. And, you know, listen, you know, the fitness business podcast, we're an educational podcast. That's what we focus on. And I love when business owners come on and not only talk about how great their business is and how wonderful it is and how they're thriving, but I love when business owners talk about, hey, we've had to go through trials and errors. We've made mistakes. We've learned from our mistakes. So I appreciate that you say that you've changed and evolved over the years that you've been in business. Yeah, totally. And what we've what we've also learned as well is for weekly payments, um, they're a little bit more manageable from the client's perspective. The perceived value of, we'll say, a thirty-five dollars a week versus one hundred and fifty dollars a month, even though it's roughly the same price, the perceived um, cost is higher for a monthly payment versus. Uh, the perceived value and, and I guess value is, is better for the weekly payment. So that's the reason we made that kind of shift. The additional thing, and speaking of like an education perspective, especially um, being that our, you know, most of our clients pay on reoccurring credit card or EFT for short, electronic funds transfer. Um, if a credit card gets declined, if there's theft, if, you know, someone loses or, you know, loses their credit card or fraud, um, and you can't collect that payment when your system runs, it's much better to actually know very quickly and to be able to collect a smaller payment of $35 a week versus letting it go a month and having to collect $150, which is just a tougher pill to swallow. So uh, those reasons and more are the reasons that we shift and evolve to your point, you know, Dory, from monthly to weekly payments. Yeah, that's great. And we'd love to hear the changes that you made. I'm sure many of our listeners will be reaching out to you to just get a little bit more information about your pricing as we, we do find that's always a hot topic. So yeah, of course. Speaking of hot topics, the next one always is about marketing. So many people struggle with marketing. How do you get the word out? And then once you get the word out, how do you keep the hype with through your marketing? Could you talk a little bit about how you market the boot camp? Yeah, incredible question. And really marketing is the top of the spear. So from an owner perspective, what we teach our ownership is when they first get in the business, they're typically doing a lot of the job functions. They're doing the marketing, they're in the sales, they're going to do the administration, they're going to do some coaching, HR and finance. Um, but ultimately, as the business grows, the owner is going to peel off and really hire on, you know, people that can fill the coaching bucket, fill the finance bucket, fill the, you know, sales bucket. But really, from a marketing perspective, that's one of the, the major tasks that the owner still should have influence because really everything starts with marketing. If you don't have people coming through your doors, then your operations, then your coaching, then your administration, nothing else matters. So marketing is the key function uh, that uh, typically owners should uh, always um, have influence and take within the, underneath their control and their accountability. Um, but ultimately, the, there's a wide variety of ways of market. So, you know, if you have a, a funnel, uh, as an example, um, you know, for a 28 day program or whatever offer that you're running, you know, Facebook, Instagram, um, Pinterest, I mean, these are all places that you should have a very strong social media presence and be able to uh, put dollars behind that funnel to basically attract new leads. Uh, so that's a really, really important, you know, marketing play from a social you know, media paid traffic perspective, also organic, you know, posting. So you should have the, you know, taking pictures and getting testimonials from clients and constantly, you know, posting that on your Facebook page and your Instagram page as an example, because a lot of marketing is actually content creation. So, you know, those are, you know, a couple of different, you know, uh, hot topics and strategies to really focus in on. Uh, the third aspect is referrals. And at the end of the day, you need to have a strong culture of referrals at your location because referrals, you're going to have the highest quality quality uh, of prospect because they're already pre-sold. They've already, you know, been discussed, um, you know, about your program from their friend, from their family, from their coworker. So they're pre-sold. But the key is that number one, you need to ask, 
And number two, you need to create an awesome culture and awesome workout experience. Because if you actually take a step back and you think about it from a marketing perspective and a human, I guess, dynamic perspective, when someone's referring your boot camp or a restaurant or a movie, at the end of the day, that person is putting their name and their reputation online, on the line. So if that experience for their friend is not exceptional, okay, they're, they're going to lose a little street cred, okay, and their ego is going to be potentially hurt in, in reputation, if you will. Um, so it's very, 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 very important that you provide incredible client experience, that energy, those relationships, because when you do, then you're going to increase the amount of, of referrals that come through, uh, because, you know, your clientele are going to feel more confident that they can put their name or reputation on the line. And the last thing, you know, not only from a programming perspective and a client experience, uh, experience perspective, you should should incentivize referrals. So we at Fit Body Bootcamp have a, a referral program called Refer and Earn. Um, so every time uh, a, new, a client brings in with their family and friends, they can hop on a free trial and their name is entered to win a um, $100 raffle at the very end or a $100 drawing at the end of the month. And so at the end of the day, you need to have an awesome program, you need to have strong relationships, you need to ask for the referral, but you also need to incentivize the referral as well. And really, I mean, we could probably talk for days about marketing, but that three-pronged approach of paid traffic, organic traffic, and referral marketing, um, you know, is really, really foundational and fundamental and critical to our Fit Body Bootcamp owner success. And I want to thank you for going into a little depth on your referral program, um, you know, what you guys do and, and how you go about that. That's a, always, again, another popular question amongst our FBP family when it comes to referrals. Yeah, totally. And one more thing on that too, you got to make it a big deal. So we literally, we raffle off a hundred dollars. So we have like fake hundred dollar bills. We just get all excited. We have people come in we're, uh, we're taking pictures with the winner. We're sending that picture on our social media channels and our you know, weekly broadcast. So you got to, to your point, uh, Dore, I used one of your taglines, the hype, you got to build the hype and you really got to sell, sell the sizzle and not just the steak is a famous adage goes in marketing. Uh, so you got to hype it up and really make your members feel like really, really special. I agree. I can't. It, it all goes back to energy, right? Got to have the energy. Got to have it. Yeah. Yeah. And listen, I, I love that you make it a visual because I think that's so important because if not, people just leave and they forget about referring and oh, do I even get anything? But yeah, who doesn't like a nice crisp $100 bill? Totally. Hype it up, you know, get excited, make them feel like a million bucks, even though you're giving a hundred, but at the end of the day, it's value there. And that's the secret sauce for sure. For sure. And I love the fact I'm going to use this as your quote. I love that you said you need to have a strong culture of referrals. Keyword being culture. I like that. Awesome. Thank you. All righty. Okay. We're out of questions. Um, I just want to add in, I didn't want to just, I, I just want to give you time to think, is there one more like key piece of advice that you would give, or do you have something like that really works at Fit Body Bootcamp or a piece of I, advice that maybe you learned along the way, even if it was, you know, something negative, you turned into positive. Oh, I mean, many learning lessons and trials and tribulations. And while, you know, I just talked about, you know, scaling multiple locations and becoming the vice president, CEO, and all these awesome accolades that people tell me, and I feel very proud of at the end of the day, I mean, humbling myself, I've made so many mistakes and continue to do so. And I think, you know, there's value in failing forward and learning from your mistakes, having a white belt mentality and really, you know, getting a group of people around you. And really that's my last message. Um, when I first got in the business, I was fired up as I was a fitness coach. It changed my life. I, you know, helped people do, you know, training on the nights and weekends. And I was so excited to launch my first uh, boot camp. And I did. And certainly, you know, there was a lot of success we had. But the one thing that if I could, you know, fast forward or excuse me, rewind the clock, if you will, to my younger version uh, of myself 10 years ago in starting the location, the biggest point of focus would be develop your leadership skills. Because uh, at the end of the day, while I'm excited on fitness and that's great. And yes, it's great to be a nutrition coach and be able to great at programming and connecting with people really at the end of the day, everything um, in your business rises and falls on leadership. And number one, you need to lead yourself because your clients are not going to follow you if you're not in shape and if you're not energetic, if you're not motivating. Um, so you have to lead yourself. Then number two, you need to lead your clients because at the end of the day, you are the lead, you are the fitness expert. So clients are coming to you, looking for your leadership, looking for your guidance but then once you grow and scale your business, the, the, the really caveat, which I really missed the mark for a while, is you have to lead your team. 
And at the end of the day, leadership is just a skill. It's an acquired skill. It takes focus, time, and learning. Uh, and there's a lot of resources out there. John, Jocko Willink is a huge uh, mentor from afar from mine. John Maxwell as well. Uh, but really understanding and learning leadership principles um, is foundational and fundamental to your success if you really want to grow your boot camp and ultimately your business and your life. So that would be the last kind of bullet point that, you know, take it from me, which I made many learning lessons along the way. I didn't fully understand the value of leadership. Now I do, and it's made all the difference. Okay, that's all. I was going to interject there, and I'm just like, no, you just ended it on an amazing note. I'm shutting up. I'm going to just, we'll just drop, mic drop that right there. That was excellent. Ooh. I swear to God, I left during this interview so many times and like you read my mind a couple of times and then you pull my two favorites, John Maxwell, Jocko Will, and I'm like, oh my God. Well, yeah. you're a pretty energetic and awesome host. So I don't know if I can't take credit for that. It's been a, a very engaging conversation today. So I am. I'm like, I think we're related. I'm like, he reads my mind. He likes some of my favorites. So that's pretty cool. All right. Nice. So the last piece that we're going to record here is the fits inspiration question and I'm here's how it works I'm going to ask you what are your top three tips to launching a boot camp you can either bring three new tips or you can use three you use it as a summary however you want to do it but as soon as you're done talking just end there's no follow-up question for me on this one Copy that. So the three tips you're asking for a successful launch of your boot camp. So yes. number one. Hold on. Let me ask the let me ask the question. Like, oh, forgive me. Uh, formally. Here we go. Ready? <laughs> Bryce, what are your top three tips to launching a successful boot camp? Ooh, million dollar question. So number one, it's taking a step back and actually. Uh, creating a strategy behind that. And really, I'm a really big fan of reverse engineering the process and also modeling other success. And that's the value that we have in our franchise because we have a paint by numbers approach. But really, at the end of the day, you want to take a step back and actually reverse engineer what you're trying to do and how you're trying to launch. Number two, you need to figure out what opening program that you're going to open with. So is it a free trial? Is it a 28-day program? Is it a six-week challenge? Whatever the case may be, you just need to decide and be very clear on what's your opening program. So that way you can put a ton of resources from a marketing perspective uh, behind that program to launch your business with success. And then lastly, you cannot be afraid to invest on social media and marketing. You need to put dollars um, out there into the marketplace. And typically speaking, we and what we recommend for our franchisees, a solid 10, if not 12 weeks of the marketing campaign. And we have a step ladder approach to for different phases, but ultimately high level to answer your question. Uh, just make sure that you're spending an ample amount of time marketing the pre-sale in order to have a very successful launch. Because if you don't do those three steps, um, you're going to be in a world of hurt. If you do, and if you do those well, um, you're going to launch with incredible success. Okay, fantastic. All right, let's just finish up with a little thank you for coming on to the podcast and you know a few words and then we'll be done. Does that sound good? Yeah, of course. All right, here we go. Bryce, you have delivered so much great advice today. I thank you so much for coming on and sharing all of your knowledge. Well, thanks, Story. It's been a pleasure. Certainly kindred spirits over here. I really appreciate you having me on. I would love to come back. For sure. I, I do have to tell you that one of my favorite pieces of advice that you gave, at least it, reson it resonated with me, was the fact about learning how to lead your team. I'm such, I just love that stuff. And I, I just believe how important that is for a business to survive because you need everybody. Because when you're not there, you have to depend on your team and you need to act, you need to teach your team how also to lead the clients and the customers. Totally. I mean, no one, no one can do it uh, alone. You got to humble yourself and realize it's a team sport. It's a team effort and leadership. Everything rises and falls on it. So that's the, the name of the game and the secret sauce. Right. And Jocko Willink would tell us that, you know, the chain of command starts at the top all the way to the bottom. And the bottom is just as important as the top message. That's it. Message you got to the same. Yep. That's it. You got to lead up and down the chain of command. Bryce, again, thank you so much. You've been a great guest. Thanks for coming on to the Fitness Business Podcast. Dory, the pleasure is mine. Thanks so much. I really appreciate you. Hey, we made it. <laughs>